the lunar landings were more than likely fabricated, faked. I affirm that we didn't go to the moon, and I would bet my life on it. We did not land men on the moon. One of the most amazing feats in human history was the Apollo 11 lunar landing on July 20th, 1969. The moonwalking of American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin that day was witnessed by an estimated 530 million TV viewers. However, that giant leap for mankind was allegedly falsified by others just a few years later. By the mid-1970s, the theory that the United States staged a moon landing to gain an advantage in the space competition with the Soviet Union had gained some popularity. These allegations are still being made now. Everyone has been taken aback by Joe Rogan's interpretation of the moon landing. He claims that up until he learned specific details that made him realize that the moon landing and the Apollo mission were bogus, he thought they were true. Were the moon landings faked? Since it happened a long time ago, how do we now know that we went there? Join us as we find out about the moon landing mistake that changes everything for Joe Rogan and the world. It's likely that you'd be completely unprepared to hold your own in a dispute over whether or not humans set foot on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Most people believe it to be unthinkable that the United States government, NASA, the 12 men and women who have set foot on the moon, and the 400,000 individuals who worked on the Apollo program could have faked one of humanity's greatest ever achievements. Yet other people believe the landings were staged. The government, they argue, faked Apollo 11 and subsequent missions to either win the space race against the Soviet Union, increase funding for NASA, or take public focus away from the Vietnam War. Finding evidence that the landings were fabricated is central to the argument for any of these perspectives. To get Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon in 1969, NASA employed and contracted with over 400,000 people. But it needed only one individual to promote the concept that it was all a fake. He went by the name of Bill Casing. It was a hunch, an intuition at first, but it quickly grew into a true conviction that the United States lacked the technological capability to successfully complete a round trip to the moon. In a roundabout way, Casing had worked for Rocketdyne, a company that contributed to the design of the Saturn V rocket engines from 1956 to 1963. We never went to the moon, America's $30 billion swindle, a pamphlet he self-published in 1976, sought evidence for his conviction through shoddy photocopies and outlandish hypotheses. Somehow, though, he planted seeds that continue to grow in Hollywood films, Fox News specials, online message boards, and video blogs. The moon hoax conspiracy has grown in popularity since 1969, despite a mountain of evidence against it. Three 82 kilograms of moon rock collected across six missions, confirmation from Russia, Japan, and China, and images from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, showing the tracks made by the astronauts in the moon dust. It is no longer controversial among 9-11 truthers, anti-vaxxers, chemtrailers, flat earthers, Holocaust deniers, and Sandy Hook conspiracy theorists that the moon landings were staged. Joe Rogan, the undisputed king of podcasts, is skeptical. YouTuber Shane Dawson fits this description too. Also, a guest on the morning talk show this morning a few years ago said that humans couldn't have set foot on the moon since it's made of light. There was no way to verify anything you saw about the moon landings, Martin Kenny asserted. A generation raised on information technology is increasingly doing its own research. According to a recent survey conducted by YouGov, 16% of British citizens agree with the statement, the moon landings were staged. 4% of respondents said they were definitely true believers in the hoax hypothesis, 12% said it was probably true, and 9% said they didn't know. Among those age 24-35, 21% believed the moon landings were faked, whereas just 13% of those aged 55 plus held this view. This is being driven by Casing's initial questions. There are several discrepancies between the photos and reality, including the absence of stars, the lack of a blast crater under the landing module, and the position of the shadows. Experts have frittered away countless hours trying to explain away such anomalies, but Casing insisted until his death in 2005 that it was all staged for television. 
It's well documented that NASA was often badly managed and had poor quality control, he said to Wired in 1994. But starting in 1969, we were able to repeatedly send humans into space. With flying colors? It defies all probability after all. At least on that point, he was correct. The United States space program was essentially non-existent when the Soviets launched Sputnik 1 in October 1957 and Sputnik 2, which carried Laika the dog, a month later. The United States Space Agency, NASA, was established in 1958 and Alan Shepard was successfully sent into space in May 1961. However, when President John F. Kennedy declared that the United States should commit itself to achieve the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth, many people thought he was crazy. While the Soviets were racking up firsts like the first woman in space, 1963, and the first spacewalk, 1965, the Americans were suffering setbacks like the loss of all three Apollo 1 astronauts in a launch pad fire. By the mid-1960s, NASA was spending over 4% of the U.S. federal budget. A trip to London's Science Museum will reveal that the lunar module's primary construction material was tin foil. As Armstrong put it, adjusting course and landing on the moon was far and away the most complex part of the flight after Apollo 8 had already orbited the moon in 1968. He said, I thought the lunar descent was probably a 13, referring to the difficulty of getting back to Earth from the moon. He evaluated the difficulty of walking around on the surface as a one inch despite having the TV cable wrapped around his feet. That is, until you consider how impossible it would be to keep a secret from the public for 50 years without a single NASA employee letting the truth slip. You would also have to believe that NASA had access to special effects on par with those shown in 2023 in 1969, and that not a single one of the world's 600 million TV viewers caught on to anything being off. The special effects in Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film 2001, A Space Odyssey, are representative of the state of the art in Hollywood at the time. It was far more convenient to shoot on site. The moon hoax hypothesis entered the modern day in 2001, when Fox News aired a documentary titled, Did We Land on the Moon? If We Disregard World War II Bomber Found on Moon, a Sunday sport front page from 1988, the claim gained traction. Casing's ideas were repackaged for a new audience and hosted by Mitch Pileggi of the X-Files. The NASA employee Launius remembers many instances of pounding of heads against control panels. We ignored this nonsense for a long time. It wasn't even worth listening to. Fox News airing of the fake documentary that claimed, we haven't landed on the moon, elevated the stakes significantly. We started getting questions from everywhere. It was parents and educators, not conspiracy theorists, who made up the bulk of the callers. People were asking, my kid saw this, what should I do? NASA reluctantly set up a website and sent out resources to educators. The poll suggesting that 20% of Americans thought the moon landing was faked was a major point of contention in the Fox News program. Polls, according to Launius, put the number between 4% and 5%. However, it is simple to word poll questions so as to get a more sensational result. An example he gives is a scene in Christopher Nolan's Interstellar 2014, in which a teacher tells Matthew McConaughey's character that the moon landings were faked to win the propaganda war against the Soviet Union. Every time there's a hearing in a serious periodical, even an offhand comment in a movie, he says, it just seeds this stuff. It's just a side note in the movie, but it did generate a huge reaction. It doesn't surprise Oliver Morton, author of The Moon, A History for the Future, that the moon hoax has endured for so long. Some people will choose the more reasonable explanation, even though there is no evidence to support it, over the more implausible one, which is the Apollo 11. Apollo's purpose, he explains, was to demonstrate the United States government's actual power. Although the hoax narrative was only conceivable because Apollo never led anywhere, there were no additional trips after 1972. The aim of the moon hoax theory is to demonstrate how powerful the American government was in making people believe things that weren't true. It's more pleasing to believe in this when the American mind turns back to paranoia in the 1970s, he argues. In 1968, spectators were wowed by director Stanley Kubrick's film 2001, A Space Odyssey, because of how accurately it depicted space. 
Some people have speculated that the government may have hired Kubrick to stage the moon landing on a studio since it was so convincing. However, Kubrick's use of astronomy painters and aeronautical engineers gave his film 2001 a convincingly realistic appearance. This was not the case with the moon landing footage. There was just one shred of evidence that Kubrick videotaped the moon landing, and it has since been disproven. Feenberg argues that the myths about America's space program are more of an ideological thing, a political thing, than it is a scientific thing, meaning that they are not grounded in fact. Conspiracy theories that the moon landing was fake may seem harmless and ridiculous to those who know better. Their effects, however, are anything from harmless, as they can lead to the spread of misinformation, the acceptance of other conspiracy theories, and even a punch from Buzz Aldrin. James Bond bears some responsibility for this. Sean Connery uses a Las Vegas casino as a cover to break into a NASA facility in the 1971 film Diamonds Are Forever. A chase takes place on a moon-themed film set, complete with astronauts from Earth. In this case, though, it serves more as a visual joke, an excuse to send the heroes racing over the Nevada desert in moon buggies. The concept that the government was misleading everyone by the time Peter Hyams released his Kissingian conspiracy thriller Capricorn 1, 1978, was no laughing matter. This one involves a doomed Mars exploration trip to prevent the astronauts, including O.J. Simpson's character, from disclosing the truth, the authorities decide to fake it and kill them. After Watergate, it wasn't so far-fetched to think that the government could be lying on this magnitude. Apollo was a watershed moment between the 1960s flower power era and the 1970s cynicism. Why can't we do X if we sent a man to the moon? It was repeated over and over again. According to Morton, Yes, the government may set itself an amazing objective and go on to achieve it, but it doesn't guarantee it can win the war in Vietnam, or clean up the inner cities, or cure cancer, or any of the things that Americans might have genuinely wanted more. You can see how this ties into the moon hoax with the widespread belief that the government isn't as powerful as it claims to be. Theories of a moon hoax focus more on what didn't happen than on the actual events. Conspiracy theorists often point to the lack of stars in Apollo images as evidence that the missions were faked. There should be thousands of stars visible in all the astronauts' photos now that they are unobscured by Earth's light pollution and murky atmosphere. Unfortunately, the photographs taken during the moon night provide the basis of this argument. All manned moon landings occurred during the day. Because of this, starlight was unable to compete with the moon's extremely reflective surface and hence failed to appear in photographs. A second popular criticism is that the crosshairs in many Apollo shots make the things in the photos look like they are in the background. This is obviously impossible if the pictures are real, thus someone painted them on. However, tests conducted on Earth have shown that the crosshairs appear less distinct when pointed at brilliantly light objects. Some of this detail is lost when these photographs are reproduced or scanned, giving the impression that the crosshair is behind the item in some shots. Others draw attention to a peculiarity in an Apollo 16 moon rock shot. Like a lettered prop from a movie, it appears to have a C written on it. When comparing this image to the original, we once again find no discrepancy. The C was not included. It was probably a stray hair or thread from the copying process. Subtle misconceptions about NASA technology and lunar physics form the basis of another line of attack on the veracity of the landings. The American flag that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin planted on the moon is a famous illustration of this. Some pictures even show it flapping about in the breeze. When there is no wind on the moon, how might this occur? The flag isn't even fluttering. The unfurled flag is supported by a rod at the pole's top. This gives the impression that the wind is holding it up. Because the moon's gravity is so feeble, the flag flutters as it tries to uncrumple. The flags waved briefly as the astronauts anchored them to the lunar surface but have since stood motionless. The absence of Armstrong's camera is sometimes cited as proof that the moon landing was staged. One of the iconic images from the moon landing is a reflection of Armstrong in Aldrin's visor. Critics have noted that Armstrong is not shown holding a camera suggesting that someone else is responsible for snapping the photo, but that simply isn't so. There was no way for Armstrong to take pictures of the lunar surface with a conventional handheld camera. He needed something simple to use while wearing his big outfit. 
Reflected in his hands is the camera he used while on the moon, which was attached to the chest of his spacesuit. The existence of the Van Allen belts is key to the theory that the landings were staged. The Earth is encircled by two enormous donut-shaped belts. The solar wind is the source of these very charged particles. Some people think it's impossible for humans to have traveled through these belts without being killed by the radiation. This was an actual worry before the Apollo flights. This is why the Apollo 11 mission scientific team took such great care to shield the astronauts from harm. They shielded the spaceship from radiation by covering it in aluminum, and they picked a route between Earth and the Moon that would take them through the Van Allen belts as little as possible. The average radiation-absorbed dosage for the astronauts on the nine Apollo flights that reached the Moon was 0.46. NASA's precautions to protect the astronauts from radiation were validated by these findings. Radiation exposure of 0.46 radians is around 10 times higher than that of medical professionals who routinely work with X-ray and radiotherapy machines, but still lower than that experienced by some nuclear energy workers. There will always be outliers and discrepancies in the data that could give rise to new accusations that the moon landings were staged until we return there. However, the massive quantity and variety of this document disproves every single one of these assertions. There are 8,400 images, thousands of hours of video, a mountain of scientific data, and complete transcripts and audio recordings of every air-to-ground communication from the Apollo moon missions that are available to the public. The Apollo crew carried back 382 pounds of lunar soil. There can be no U.S. conspiracy here, as these pebbles have been certified as lunar by laboratories all across the world. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter may be able to influence even the most steadfast skeptic. At present, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is in a low orbit, allowing it to capture detailed photographs of the Moon's surface. Throughout its journey, it has documented Apollo landing sites and recovered descent modules and rovers that were left behind. The resolution is sharp enough to make see the squiggly black lines left by the astronauts' feet. These landing locations have also been observed by spacecraft from China, India, and Japan, providing additional independent confirmation of the landings. A modest gadget that Apollo 11 planted on the moon 50 years ago has put an end to the conspiracy rumors. A lunar laser-ranging retroreflector array was installed by Armstrong and Aldrin during their day on the moon. It continues to serve its purpose, allowing us to estimate the distance to the moon to within a centimeter by reflecting lasers off of it. Without going to the moon, this would have been impossible. The fact that the lunar conspiracy has persisted, however, might be seen as a tribute to the work of the Apollo team. The Apollo missions are taken significantly more seriously by the moon hoaxers, says Morton. It shows how much they value the truth. They believe that Apollo was incredibly important. The truth is that life on Earth hasn't truly changed as a result of the moon landings. Not yet, at least. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.